Roger up. You have so many treasures here and so many memories here. What are some of the, the things that mean the most to you or that that uh, have to do with values and legacy and character and mm. overcoming adversity and... Yeah. It's a little compass, magnetic compass. You happen to see one here also. This one here? Yes. And why is that important? That compass is important because I learned how to use a compass to Boy Scouts. But the, the back story of that is the, my real compass was Daddy, the mother. And my father's guidance was, don't ever be afraid of hard work. When you fall, not if you fall, but when you fall, get up and get on with the job at hand. And always remember that you're Word is your bond and your signature is a seal to that bond. Special Forces Medal of Honor recipient Colonel Roger Donlan was the first serviceman to receive our nation's highest award for valor in Vietnam and the first Green Beret ever. 50 years have passed. It's time, Roger says, to share his life lessons with me and you. It started with the compass, Boy Scouts, and postcards he sent home from camp. Camp Tri Mount. Snapshot, Snapshot of the, of the gang. gang. Now, 1947, one cent stamp. Hello, Dad. But they're special because this Daddy was on his deathbed. He died two weeks after Boy Scout camp was over. Roger Scoutmasters became his surrogate fathers. It's their challenge to keep me on course, and it was a challenge. They were not always successful keeping me on the same path that Daddy had hoped me for, for me to stay on. I had a few distractions, but uh, that's life. You carry that compass with you. It's, is that also, I always like to say about the Special Forces and about the Medal of Honor recipients having this moral compass in your gut that about doing the right thing. Well, that's nobody's exactly working. what it's about. But this, the compass I've used often and remind him all of us, that we all have compasses within us. Mm -hmm. And if we all have a story, and some people don't have a, somebody to guide them initially. So there's a challenge and the opportunity for others to, to pick up and help people. And then you have an opportunity to become a mentor or a leader or a friend of somebody and you get them on course. And that's what represented, represented here, that we have to stay on course. Very few, if any, of us are able to stay on the course truly all the times. So, and what in my experience, if you were with the right team of people, like-minded, like-spirited, like when you do falter, somebody's gonna recognize your weak moment and reach out to you and pull you back on course. And that's happened to me time and time again. And it's not just for troops, that's for, for everybody. For everybody, that's exactly, that's for, yeah. I think the importance of, of mentoring and, and passing along these lessons and, and helping each other and encouraging each other in, in times of challenge and adversity and, and when things get rough, that's... That's, that's it, and then everybody's gonna have those moments in life, so there's... Plenty of opportunities to reach out and help people and encourage them. And there's the compass. That's the compass, and that's the exact replica of the one that I used as a Boy Scout. And this one's in super pristine condition. Mm -hmm. And this has has the little sack that it came in originally. I see all these compasses here, and I'm, I'm detecting another theme. Well, that's it. Mm -hmm. True North, finding your moral compass, your mm -hmm. professional compass, your work compass. You can use it in any way possible. But, uh, yeah, and the trick is how to stay on course. Oh, there's Aaron Bank. There's Aaron Banks. Yeah, right there. And I was visiting his home one time. He was a little rascal. 
But you said he had big hands. Yeah, big hands. He's a. We consider him the father of special forces. Father of modern day special forces. Yeah, yeah that's right. he's one of the uh, grand grand person. The father of special forces mentored Roger. This is a stiletto used by our OSS people during World War II. And the OSS was the, is the genesis of the modern day special forces. And the father of modern day special forces is Aaron Bank, which is his name is engraved here. And he signed it on this side. It says Aaron Bank. And the OSS is the, basically the predecessor to modern day special, special forces. Special forces, that's right. And Aaron Bank is a legend. Yeah, he's considered the father of modern day special forces. And there's a photograph of Aaron Bank presenting this to me and holding me, and he's big hands, he had unbelievable hands for a little rascal. But he's demonstrating how to hold this and how to slip it up somebody's rib cage to get to the right spot. They, uh, Wait, now you have to show me how to do that. So show no, me how to do that. Since I, you learned from Aaron Banks, you need to show me how well, to. Well, I'd, I'd have to look at the picture to get the proper grip, but he did it. But he did was a good, quick jab. Mm -hmm. Good, quick jab? Yeah. They, there are times you have to be quick and you have to be stealthy, but that's another whole story. But the other name here is Bernie Fisher, who was an air commando who earned his Medal of Honor in, in Vietnam. And he happened to be standing there at the time, so I got Bernie to autograph that too. Hmm. So this is kind of my special memento that I, I cherish. And all these others have different stories behind them. This one happens to be the Yarborough knife. General Yarborough was the commanding general of JFK is a center for special forces, special warfare center. And in recent years, they, they named this knife in his honor called the Yarborough knife, and they're all serial numbered. And this number is 0726. That's the serial number of my special forces team that I was privileged and honored to command in Vietnam in 1964. So this is, has another special meaning to me. And that's the, the Yarborough, the Special Forces knife. Do they still yes. give those to the... This was presented to each, each man that earned his beret at gradu upon graduation. So you have to earn this knife. Do that's you... an interesting knife. Roger received it from a Polish soldier student he mentored. And I presented him some blood wings. Blood wings are when you take the clamp off the back and you just put them up and you pound them into somebody's chest. It's, it's not uh, politically correct, but it's very inspiring and motivating to young troopers. That's motivating and inspiring. It's tradition. It's tradition, it's which tradition. is frowned upon these days. And the hell with political correctness, there's some things that should continue. A good kick in the ass or, mm -hmm. or a good set of blood wings is one way of doing that. It just has to be done in a respectful way. And, it, and this next one has another interesting story behind it. It's the Donlin number one. Zero, 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 one. You have a knife named after you. Yeah, well, I couldn't believe that happened, but that's a special honor. And this is... Uh, and that is a scouting buck a knife. Scout. We started as a boy scout. Well, that's the connection. And as you look at all these things, the, the, if you, the closer you look at them, there's a thread that runs between years and experiences. Oh, and the, uh, that uh, with, the, with the Boy Scout and the, the training that you received there and the, the, the lessons about yeah. moral compass and it's carried you through all of yeah. these, these different well, life experiences. And all of that was preceded by the lessons at home. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because uh, as I mentioned, Daddy would talk this about honesty and your word and your bond. So when he said I'd become a scout, the scout's the first thing they know that they learn is a scout is trustworthy. So that was a natural bridge for my growth, and he knew that. 
And then as we learned more, the scout was trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, crooning, and reverent. Those values seemed mysterious as young kids. <laughs> and we wrestled with memorizing them, but throughout life they become part of us. Did those values that you learned then help you when you were on a special forces team and, and then later with representing and being a Medal of Honor recipient oh, and having to represent all of this? Exactly, yes. Yeah, it's, it's those values are the values you can go back even further, you can go back to the, our upbringing at home and in school and church and the Ten Commandments and all that's encompassed there, they have a way of flourishing through life as new experiences and new challenges come your way. Is it reverting back to these basics, these 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 things that you just know know in your yeah. gut that are the right things, and you just got to do that right thing? Yeah, it's like Coach Lombardi said, he's a big, great football coach. He says, you know, it's the basics that count. Mm -hmm. Get those solid for a foundation and build on those. I bet those and, uh, basics, when uh, when even in combat, when things go rough, when uh, when it becomes a bad day, so to speak, it's yeah. reverting back to those basics and muscle memory and 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 team. Uh, yeah, exactly. You, you do how you you perform the way you've been trained and. I can't say enough about how important the training in Special Forces was for me, but I mean, I've always prayed that I'd be able to have enough strength to, to get through the next battle. And we've always been taught to have a reserve. So in my prayer, I always said, I hope I have a reserve, enough in my reserves, because there's going to be another battle that you, that you haven't planned on, and you're going to depend on that reserve. And, so far, I've had that opportunity and good fortune to be able to get through the battles of life. And you never know what's going to be coming next. Just be prepared. And that's the motto of Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. be prepared. Each one of these coins have a story behind it. Most of the current living recipients mm -hmm. I found Jacob Parrott is the first recipient of the Medal of Honor in 1862, private. And then one of my favorites throughout history is Josh Chamberlain from Gettysburg. And then one of my favorites of all the living that I have known is John Finn. I remember John. John lived to be 101 years old. He served in World War II. World War II, and here's a picture of John Finn and I I think you're at a baseball game. Yeah, it looks like the Chicago Cubs. There's John. And we both, we, we got shirts with our names on it in the year of our action. So here's John in 41 and Because John 20, was at 20, Pearl Harbor, wasn't he? He was at Pearl Harbor, yeah. And he was just about, I forget what year this was taken. He was close to 100 years old in this picture. But a great gentleman, a great storyteller, and. Well, I see you have your arms linked. Yeah. You were uh, brothers. In many ways, yeah. Did he mentor you as well when you first came into the I listened Medal of Honor to, I listened to every I listened to every word he uttered. And he always included history and humor in it. It was he was awesome. I don't know what's in here. Could be anything. More coins. More coins. You have a lot of coins. What? Yeah. But each one that, that uh, when you get a coin for, for civilians who don't understand the whole idea of the coin challenge, that this is a, an honor, but it also has a story to it too. Yeah, well this one I just found, I've forgotten I rat holed this one away. This is one of my own coins. Mm -hmm. And what I did with my coins, I serial numbered them. And this one happens to be 763. What's the significance of 763? Seventh month of 1963. It was the year I went to Special Forces training. So I kind of stuck that one away just for my own safekeeping. And I just discovered it at this moment. I forgot <laughs> I hit it. I'd forgotten I'd stuck it away. It's nice when life gives you these little yeah. surprises. Yeah. 
I see one more knife over there. One more knife, that's a little different. That's pretty uh, ornate. Ornate, huh? Ooh. Ever hear of the Knights of Malta? Yes. Well, the Knights of Malta have the dames, the dame of Malta. And this is Norma's. Norma is Roger's wife of 50 plus years. And behind that door, what's behind that door over I'm there? I'm gonna see behind that door. Behind the door. Is Excalibur. So you're King Arthur. You have that's, Excalibur right here. That's just Knights of Malta. I'm getting back to this for a second. This the the Dame yeah. of Malta. So Norma has a knife. Let's say that you and Norma have a little tiff one evening. Not that you uh -huh. ever would, but here, Norma Norma's armed and dangerous here. No, she's she's that fully all the time. She's <laughs> locked and loaded. <laughs> Spouses and families are the backbone of the military. Recognition for Norma and her family's decades of service include an infantry award while I visited them. And the award is called the Shield of Sparta. Again, going back to the basics, all the way to Sparta and history. So values of honesty, integrity, commitment and service, sacrifice. And that carries to the entire family, the entire right. team. Yeah, yeah, and it's just not the warrior that he, symbolizes or epitomizes or lives up and cherishes those values. It's their immediate family and it's an extended family.